everybody loves sensational spuds. For me, these nuggets of goodness epitomize the joy of gardening. They're satisfying to plant, grow really fast, and unearthing the buried treasure when it's time to harvest. Well, that's one of the highlights of the gardening year. Hi, I'm Ben, and today we're going to be getting these guys into the ground, and I will be sharing some top tips so you are unearthing perfect potatoes every time. Your journey to spended spuds starts with choosing the right variety, and for that, you'll need to decide how you want to cook them. Now, a flowery type like this is perfect for, say, mashing or roasting, while a firm, waxy potato is super boiled or as salad potatoes. As well as deciding on the texture and flavour of your potatoes, you'll also need to make a call on when you want to harvest them. And for this, potatoes are divided into three categories. First, you have your first earlies. Now, these are the first to be planted in early spring, and they're also really quick growing, giving a harvest as early as early summer. Next up are your second earlies. These take slightly longer to grow and are harvested from the second half of summer. And then you have your main crop potatoes. These guys are planted a little later than your earlies, usually around mid-spring, and they take longer to grow, so will be good to harvest from late summer and throughout the autumn. Now, main crops take the longest to grow, but they are also the very best for storing, so that they're worth growing for that reason alone. Kept in the right conditions, they will last for several months, giving you the tantalizing prospect of garden-grown spuds in the depths of winter. Potatoes sold specifically for planting are called seed potatoes. Now, when you get them, you want to get them out of the bag straight away and then lay them out in a tray to sprout somewhere frost-free and bright in a process called chitting. Careful how you say that. Just get them all nestled in there and why we do this is because it really speeds things along so that by the time these potatoes hit the ground, they're primed and itching to send out roots. Now, some areas run special potato days where you can buy individual seed potatoes for planting, which is great if you've got a smaller space but want to try a lot of different varieties. And here are some seed potatoes that have been chitting for about a month indoors on the windowsill. And you can see they produce these really sturdy, stocky green shoots. They're not particularly big and that's fine. What you don't want are those long, pale shoots you get from potatoes that have been left in the dark. If you haven't had time to chit your potatoes, it really doesn't matter. Uh, just get them in the ground if it is time to plant. They'll soon catch up, so that's fine. Have a little look at this sea potato here. You often see the sprouts beginning to emerge, but if they haven't got any, what you're looking for are these little dimples here. That is where the sprouts emerge from. So you want the end of the potato with the most dimples or sprouts facing upwards. Old egg cartons, by the way, make excellent trays because they hold the potato in place. And you could write the variety name on the flap here, for example. A great way to get more seed potatoes for free is to cut them in half. Only do this if they've got plenty of these sprouts or dimples, which are also called eyes, incidentally. Just cut it in half, or you could even do three pieces. That's got some good shoots there. And then it's got to set and cure on the outside, the cut side, for at least two days before you plant it. Outside here, I've prepared my planting area by spreading out about an inch or three centimeters of well-rotted compost. Potatoes are pretty hungry plants, so this extra nourishment will encourage good soil fertility and a strong harvest. We know that lots of you are avid viewers, but haven't yet subscribed, and it would make my day if you could put that right. Now, it's still quite early in the season, but I'm planting into these raised beds, which are freer draining, and that means they should warm up a lot quicker than the surrounding ground, which is really handy this early in the season. Now, these are first early potatoes, and I'm just getting them spaced out between about uh, 14 to 16 inches in both directions. That's 35 to 40 centimeters apart. Now, this early in the season, taste and speed are my main priorities. But if you wanted slightly bigger potatoes, then you could space them slightly further apart. And main crop potatoes, they will need a bit more space to stretch their legs. So set them at least 18 inches or 45 centimeters apart in both directions. 
So to plant your potato, you just want to dig an individual hole for your seed potato, nice and deep like that, and then in the bottom to give things a real boost. Uh, just add a little handful of uh, organic fertilizer. I'm just using a little scattering of chicken manure pellets, then pop your potato in and then cover it to a good depth. We're aiming for about six inches or 15 centimeters of soil above the top of it. And that's it really. I love this bit of gardening. For me, this is pretty much the essence of gardening. It's really tactile and just, uh, just reeks of so much promise and excitement to come. So we've come back down here to show you the other main method for planting potatoes. I've dug two V-shaped trenches here and they're about two to two and a half feet. So that's 60 to 75 centimeters apart. And now to enrich the bottom of the trench. And for that, I've just got some garden compost, which I'm just gonna add along the bottom of the trench to line it like this. And then, we'll go in with a little more of these beautiful chicken manure pellets. Scatter these along. And then it's in with our seed potatoes. This time, because the rows are a bit further apart, we can plant them a bit closer. So about 30 centimeters or one foot apart, very roughly. There we are. Don't they look handsome in the trench? Love it. And now all that's left to do is simply to cover the potatoes back over. Now, I don't think it makes a big deal which method you choose to plant your potatoes. Just do what's right for you. But I suggest this is a good way if you've got plenty of room. And then if you're in a smaller space, planting them individually in a block is probably easier and better. One other option is to plant your potatoes into straw. Very simple, just lay the potatoes on the soil surface and then cover them with your straw. It's worked really well for me, but if you have lots of slugs in your garden, just be aware that this could give them places to lurk. But as I say, it's worked for me, and we've done a video on that, which I will pop a link to in the description. If you're growing your potatoes in a smaller bed like this, it may be easier just to add organic matter to the whole area to raise the whole soil level rather than trying to earth up in quite a small space. Now, the other thing to watch out for, especially with my early starts here, is frost. The foliage, if it gets frosted, usually recovers, it pushes on through again, but it can nevertheless set plants back a bit. So if a frost is forecast, make sure your shoots don't get clobbered by either covering the area with some sort of fleece or warming row cover, a couple of layers, or you could cover individual clusters of shoots with a pot, say a terracotta pot, or you could just draw up the soil to cover the shoots over. If you haven't got much space, then a great alternative is to grow your potatoes in large containers or old compost sacks, or indeed purpose-sold potato sacks. This is also a great way to get a bit of a head start because you can start these off under cover or somewhere sheltered. Now I've got about four inches or 10 centimeters of potting mix in the bottom here, and then you're gonna plant just one or two potatoes and cover them over. I'm planting two potatoes because I want lots of smaller potatoes for salads rather than fewer bigger ones. Once the foliage is growing, add more potting mix a bit at a time to gradually hill or earth them up until you reach the top of the container, at which point the foliage seems to almost explode into growth, sending all that solar energy down to the roots to produce those potatoes. Now these are staying in here for a nice early crop, but any sunny sheltered position would do well too. Do keep your potatoes really well watered, especially in warmer weather, because this will make all the difference in achieving a really good crop. Potatoes aren't fussy, which makes them a great choice for beginner gardeners. They grow well in most soils and almost always produce plenty to go hunting for at harvest time. That said, there are a few things you can do to elevate your crop. Firstly, water. This is really important because potatoes are lush and leafy plants and it takes a lot of energy to swell those tubers. So if it's dry, really do get down there and water. The second thing you can do is to hill or earth up your potatoes. That just means 
drawing the soil around the stems to create more volume of soil for the tubers to grow into. And it also reduces the risk of potatoes kind of working their way to the surface and turning green in the light. To hill or earth up potatoes, it's simply a matter of using a hoe to draw up the soil every time the shoots reach about six to eight inches or 15 to 20 centimeters high. And then just keep on doing that until you can either hoe up no more or the foliage closes in over the top. We've chosen, chitted, planted and hilled our precious potatoes. We are almost home and dry, but before we cross the finishing line, let's look at a couple of diseases to watch out for that could scupper our mission for perfect potatoes. The first of these is scab, which causes, would you believe it, a scabby kind of warty skin. This is caused by dry soil when the tubers are developing. So to avoid it, the best thing you can do is to keep the soil consistently moist, especially when the tubers start to develop, which is when the foliage begins to really bush out. Also, of course, adding that organic matter at planting time will help to improve your soil structure and water retention capacity. And there are also scab resistant varieties available. The second to watch out for is blight or late blight, which strikes after a period of warm, dry weather, seemingly out of the blue. Blight causes dark patches on the leaves as it takes hold, then spreads with devastating speed, killing off your entire crop. There are blight resistant varieties available, but these are rather limited. The good news is that early varieties are harvested usually long before there's any danger of blight, which happens later on in the summer. Should blight affect your crop, act really quickly, cut down the foliage right to the ground and then use up the potatoes as quickly as possible. Harvesting potatoes at the right stage will stop them from sitting around too long and becoming a target of slugs. And that's particularly important for main crop potatoes, which are in the ground for longer. Now, early potatoes are harvested while the plants are typically still in flower. They're often about the size of a, a hen's egg, but it's up to you how big you let them grow. To lift them, just get your fork or other tool in around the side of the plant and dig carefully so as to avoid spiking those potatoes. Grab the whole plant up by the base of the stems and you can usually just then lift the whole thing up, but be sure to carry on rooting around to look for any potatoes you've missed. Dig up main crop potatoes towards the end of the season as the foliage is dying back. I find it easier to cut the foliage back first and remove all of that before digging them up on a dry day. Leave the potatoes on the soil surface for a few hours so the skin can dry off a bit, but don't leave them any longer or they may start to turn green. Green potatoes can give you a really upset tummy. You can cut the green bit off, but obviously best avoiding if you can. Once they've dried off, Pack them up into breathable sacks or just sturdy cardboard boxes to store them somewhere dark, cool, but frost free. Only store potatoes that are free of bruises, damage or disease because you don't want them to spread and infect other potatoes in storage. And check on your store potatoes every few weeks and remove any that are looking a bit suspect or going a bit soft. Nothing beats steaming hot potatoes with a knob of butter and a scattering of mint or chives. Yummy. Now for more potato themed goodness, check out this playlist, which includes my top tips for choosing the best varieties. I'll catch you next time.